let's cook, let's cook, let's cook. For over 30 years, MasterChef has had one aim, to find the best culinary talent in the nation. Through a series of extraordinary cooking challenges, watched over by some of the world's most prestigious judges. Let's look into the history of this long running TV show and the surprising disagreement that led to its creation. We'll look at the judges, the tests, the dishes and the contestants that made MasterChef a staple of TV schedules. With versions in over 60 productions across the world, broadcast in 200 plus countries, MasterChef is watched globally by over 300 million viewers. The UK edition of MasterChef is about to enter its 20th year in its current incarnation. Contestants are expected to show off their skills, think on their feet, replicate famous dishes, demonstrate their culinary knowledge and work a busy service in top-end restaurants. Over a series of weeks, the dozens of wannabe master chefs battle through a knockout tournament to impress the hosts and a revolving panel of critics, chefs and former champions. The format is instantly recognisable when you come across it on TV and very easy to dip in and out of. But it didn't have the most obvious of beginnings. Britain does not have a great reputation for its food. There are many reasons for this which are beyond the scope of this video, but in short, combining rationing through World War II and for many years after 1945, a lack of an enthusiastic food culture, a thinning of margins combined with a chase to the best price, have led to UK cuisine being looked down upon outside of the country. Many, myself included, are happy to boast about our excellent uh, produce, ancient methods, exceptional homegrown chefs, centuries of experience with roasting meats in particular, and a diverse weather that gives us superb conditions. And it gives our cuisine an overall homeliness and a warmth in our cookery. However, the stigma persists. The negative stereotype was an opinion shared by Mel Brooks, legendary film writer, actor and director, responsible for some of the best comedies of the 20th century. In the early 1980s, during a production meeting at 20th Century Fox, he was holding court and openly mocking British food with his creatives. One person in that meeting was noted English director, Frank Rodham. Frank is from County Durham in the northeast of England. His biggest hit was the 1979 cult film Quadrophenia, the magnum opus for mods that inspires fashions and reunions to this day. Uh, and best of all, it launched the career of Phil Daniels. Confidence is a preference for the habitual voyeur of what is known as... Frank's other most notable creation was TV series Arf Vida Same Pet, the story of working lads from the northeast eking out a living working in Germany. But we're getting paid top wax. Well, I've already seen the drones, I reckon there's at least two months work. It was off the back of these two hits in particular, he found himself in a meeting with Brooks and his coterie pitching new ideas. In an interview with William Sitwell, he said, They were a braying pack of creatives saying that there was no such thing as British cuisine, that if you wanted a good meal in London, you had to go Italian or French or Indian, but never British. This argument struck a nerve in him, and he kick-started the idea of a cooking competition between amateur British cooks. With his reputation behind him, Rodham was able to secure attention of BBC execs and devise the cooking competition MasterChef. How about pasta with tomato and basil sauce? Good idea. Bostonian Lloyd Grossman was chosen as host. Lloyd was a familiar face on TV, having devised and co-presenting through the keyhole, among other roles. He also been the food critic for Harper's and Queen magazine since 1981, so he had the right balance of subject knowledge and presenting kudos. For MasterChef, the only food programmes were programmes about how to cook. The brilliance of MasterChef was that it wanted to present food as entertainment. It was the first really entertaining, popular show about food. Then it took off and was the zeitgeist. It was exactly the right timing. It wasn't predicted to be a success by everyone. Lloyd recorded a meeting with a BBC exec. That's a terrible idea. Who would want to watch people eat? Filmed in the TVS television theatre, the MasterChef of 1990 is difficult to recognise from the shouty, dashing friathon of today. Three cooks are challenged to cook a three course meal in two and a half hours and allowed to bring up to five specialty ingredients or utensils from home. While I'm sure it didn't feel like it for the contestants, it always had a languid and relaxed pace. I can remember watching it on Sunday afternoons, putting off finishing my homework and feeling like the programme would last forever. Though I did enjoy it. Subtitled the British Grand Prix for Amateur Chefs, the programme ranged from 30 to 60 minutes and the menus had a distinctly French flavour. In this pre-Marco Pierre White revolutionary world, the, the menus read back now are very fussy and overworked for today's tastes. But at the 90s, it was cutting edge. 
top chefs and restaurateurs of the day were guests brought on to eat and to judge. Guests like Pierre Kaufman, Terence Conran, Michel Roussinia and many others. In this form, the show continued until 2000 with host Grossman being replaced by chef Gary Rhodes for one tournament. Lloyd was not happy with changes that was planned to the show. They told me this summer that they wanted the show to switch channels, which I very strenuously object to. They said they wanted it to be less of a competition, which I think is totally moronic. And then they decided they didn't want to do Junior MasterChef, which to me is total lunacy because everyone loved the show. It had a similar setup, but with a more relaxed and modern studio. Unfortunately, ratings declined and was cancelled after that 2001 series. I've put the names of the winners between 1990 and 2001 on the screen now. I consider myself engaged with chefs and cooks and up to date, but few of these names sound familiar to me now in 2024. I made a few notes on their selected achievements. If there's anything you want to add to that, please let me know in the comments below. Arguably the greatest legacy of MasterChef of the early years is this Reeves and Mortimer sketch, which people of a certain age will regard as iconic. Shift. <laughs> That's not large. Cake a show. It's a show cake. Cake like a show. Show cake. Cake a show. In the early 2000s, Rodin thought he could give it another go, and he pitched a new format to the BBC, working with Elizabeth Murdoch and her production company, Shine. Around this time, reality TV was in a real boom. We'd had Big Brother, we'd had Pop Idol. Every TV network was looking for that next success, that next reality competition show that would take them to the next level. MasterChef was next in line. So in 2005, along with exec producer John Silver and producer Kate Ross, they revived the format under the title MasterChef Goes Large. In a post-Pop Idol, mid-X Factor world, suddenly everything is brighter, louder, and a veritable riot after the staid and fussy Grossman years. Instead of a single host, a pair was chosen to front the show. Chef and restaurateur John Turode would judge the cooking, beating out critic A.A. A. Gill for the role. It was felt that two chefs would unbalance the show, so commercial greengrocer Greg Wallace was more of a straight role and presented the diner. Greg was known to TV producers, having originally presented Saturday Kitchen on BBC One and Veg Talk on Radio 4. The show moved from a classic BBC studio to the working kitchens of City University London with exposed brickwork and shelves stacked with ingredients. And just in case you drift off, the soundtrack is pumping techno and buzzing EDM, cutting every minute. It's Caroline. There is a huge push on changing your life and realising your dreams, which is repeated over and over again, with the grand prize being to work in a professional kitchen. Whoever wins, it's going to change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Part of the thing of the early series of MasterChef is that contestants had to commit to changing their life. Things felt different. We caught a new energy and hope that people had about the possibility to change careers. In a change from the previous generation, rather than preparing one three-course menu over one show, contestants went through a series of different rounds. Series one to nine of this reborn MasterChef followed a very similar template throughout the early heats. A handful of hopefuls start with the invention test. Would-be MasterChefs are given a range of ingredients and invited to come up with something on the spot. This round often gave us the most humorous results. But the oil seeping. Uh. In later years, this would be replaced by the market test where they can choose from a, a decent range of ingredients. Though, generous, can, this can cause some cooks to select too many things and yes, more humorous things ensue. There are many things on there I like, but I have to say, I don't like them all together. Then they might face the pressure test, where they'll be thrown into a professional kitchen, pushed into busy service to see how they cope. Inevitably, they get feedback that they were too slow, but did okay by the end. And I'll be honest, I used to skip over this bit quite a lot because it was so repetitive. Then a final test where they would cook their own two course meal under a strict time limit, and then gradually get whittled down throughout the rounds. Over the years, challenges would change to freshen up the format and demonstrate different aspects of the participants and to keep things engaging for the viewer. The calling card would be a more welcoming first round so that they can begin by showing off a dish they actually know well, hoping that it shows off their personality. A reinvention test where a previously used ingredient would be used again. Very common would become a test where they must cook two courses for three critics or former contestants. A palate test in which they taste an already created dish and unpick all the ingredients they can name. 
critic's choice, where a restaurant critic sets a challenge using a particular ingredient or method. Once we're out of the heat, the gloves are off and all sorts of challenges started to emerge. Contestants could find themselves faced with a mass catering challenge make a well-known chef's signature dish for the chef themselves, or fly abroad to work in a completely unique kitchen environment. After three years, they dropped the goes large bit and just became simply master chef again. The set would move locations over the years, from Ram Brewery in Wandsworth with its industrial feel, to Three Mill Studio, which gave it arguably its most cinematic look from 2014 to 2023. For the 2024 series, filming for MasterChef has moved to a new bespoke set in Birmingham, as part of the BBC's drive to improve its regional reach. There's subtle changes in the tone too over the decades. In the mid-2000s, negative feedback was harsh, pointed and unabashed. Can you remember the last time you might have eaten an orange with a potato? You put a dead leaf on any plate, you're telling me you're not going to eat the food. Why should you expect anybody else to eat the food? Because if they don't know their stuff, they ain't great cooks. I don't know if we should give Joe another chance. Actually, you haven't done yourself any favours. You haven't done a very good speech. You didn't do very good product identification. As reality TV grew up, we saw more constructive criticism and less outright insults. That cake doesn't look cooked. The flavour of your coconut custard I really like. The carrot cake is more dough than it is cake. Your pecan bristle is on the edge of being burnt and scorn a bit bitter. In later years, you'd also get small glimpses into the camaraderie between the contestants as they came back from the judging bench, which helps soften the edges. Part of the success of MasterChef has to be put down to the camaraderie between John and Greg. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Oi, that's my line. John providing advice and somewhat of a raised eyebrow sometimes of what the contestants are doing, but always giving genuine help. Greg, however, playing it a little bit silly, joking around, and as always, going for the desserts, which everyone knows he loves. Oh, and season five also gave us this. I like the buttery biscuit base. I like the base, 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 base. I like the buttery biscuit base. The show has also seen success by spinning off the format into different flavors. This includes the inevitable celebrity version running since 2006, as well as The Professionals, my personal favorite, where chefs from inside the industry show off what they can do. Michelle Rule Jr., Monica Galletti, Marcus Waring, and Anna Hall have presented this over the years. The format is much the same, although asking professionals to think on their feet and recreate one of the host's recipes under a strict timeline is a thoroughly insightful round and my favorite part of it. Welcome to Junior Master Chef and a brand new series of our cookery competition for 10 to 15 year olds. There have also been versions for younger cooks, with Junior Master Chef popping up over the years and Young Master Chef re debuting in 2023. There are dozens and dozens of localized versions for different countries Spain, Canada, USA, Australia, but far too many to go through them all here and do them all justice. But the principle of an elimination reality cooking show remains the core. MasterChef has produced some excellent talent throughout the years, with almost all the champions continuing their career in food. And much like other reality shows, the runner-ups also eking out their own different shows and different careers with plenty of successes. I can't list all of the achievements of the winners here, but here's a few headlines below. Almost all of them wrote a book or picked up newspaper columns. The first winner of the modern era was Tomasina Myers, who created her chain of Mexican cantinas, Oaxaca. Second series champion Peter Bayliss became a private chef and food writer. Series 3 gave us Stephen Wallace, who became a private chef and consultant. James Nathan of Series 4 served as head chefs for many top places. Matt Follis, apart from being the jolliest of winners, set up numerous restaurants. Drew Baker from Series 6 did a spot of stages and became a food writer. Series 7's Tim Anderson turned out a bunch of books, his latest comes out this year. Shalina Permalu won Series 8 and has written books, columns, frequently appears on TV. 2013's Natalie Coleman became a successful chef in many restaurants. Ping Coons won Series 10, became a Malaysian food ambassador and runs cookery courses. Series 11 winner Simon Wood achieved a boyhood dream and runs Oldham Athletic Football Club's kitchens. Jane Devonshire runs regular food courses and works food events. Saleha Mahmoud Ahmed wrote a well-received cookbook and continued her career in the NHS. Kenny Tutt won in 2018, opened a restaurant and offers private dining. 
Irini Sortsuglu got busy writing books and giving talks about representation for women in the kitchen. In 2020, winner Thomas Freight launched his fine dining at home service. Tom Rhodes, winner in 2021, creates recipes and offers private dining. Series 18 winner Eddie Scott is about to release his first cookbook. And our newest champion, Charia Catiot, is opening her first restaurant in Surrey in 2024. It remains one of the most popular programmes on UK TV, with very, very high ratings. As of Q4 2023, YouGov polled British adults and found MasterChef to be the most popular cooking programme in the UK. But apart from giving us something entertaining to watch, whether in genuine joy as we cheer along, or the schadenfreude of a dish gone wrong, MasterChef has done something else in the UK specifically. Given us vocabulary to talk about food, whether it's cooking at home for ourselves or others, or eating out at restaurants, MasterChef has democratised the language of food. Look at the dishes put up by contestants in the first few series in the early rounds. Usually a protein, a claggy sauce and some token veg on the side. In 2023, just picking a few episodes, fish tacos three ways, tempura curry leaves, crab tortellini, roasted chicken with black beans, food from all over the world at different levels of expertise. The diversity of the contestants is incredibly broad, not in a box ticking way, but people bringing recipes from their authentic selves done their own way. You'll think I'm mad, but it's about the democratisation of food. At that point, good food was only for rich people. It was like, no, hang on a second, let's democratise this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little history of MasterChef. What's your favourite MasterChef memory? Pop a comment below and let me know. If you could also hit the like button, it makes an enormous difference to how many people get to see this video. So thanks very much, and I'll catch you next time.